Hello and welcome to this episode of Blender Create a Room. In this episode we're going to look at how to create some simple slatted blinds and windows and start to add some of the last finishing touches to our simple room that we've made over the past two episodes. So we're going to make a simple slatted blind like here to go across the window uh, to add a bit of character to our room. So if we open up our Blender project we've been working on we can see the room as it is. Last week obviously we created the stairs and the shelving and before that we've created the walls using booleans and tables, chairs, floors. We're going to focus on the window itself today so if we come on over here we've got our window. What I want to do is create a very simple window frame to start with. So we're going to create a cube and we're going to drag this in and we're going to roughly align it with our window itself. Now we're going to resize this cube so that it's just larger than the opening in the window that we've got over here. So if I use the transform tools and slowly start to resize. And I've made it just larger than the opening in the window. And this is going to serve as a very simple window frame, so the part that goes around the opening in the window. And there we go, that's roughly the right size. Next what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we've got this object selected. We're going to duplicate it, and as soon as I hit duplicate, I'm also going to hit escape on my keyboard so it stays exactly where it is. And I've just duplicated that object. Now I'm going to scale it down by pressing S on my keyboard and moving my mouse. And I'm going to resize it so that it's just smaller, once again, than the opening in the window. And I'm going to go into edit mode to do this, just to make it quicker and easier. And there we go. And make sure that your, your second cube comes all the way through the window on both sides. There we go. That's perfect. We go back into object mode and what we're going to do is we're going to use this second cube here as a boolean um, and it's going to create a hole in the window frame so I'm going to right click the first cube that we made which is our window frame I'm going to go add modifier under the spanner icon and choose boolean and then under the boolean I'm going to select the second smaller cube I've just made which for me is cube 12 I'm going to choose the option for difference and the difference option with the second smaller cube it's going to puncture a hole through there and I'm going to click apply to apply that effect. Now if I select that smaller one and move it out we can see it's created a hole in there and we've got quite a nice looking window frame. So really building on last episode's look at how to use booleans or the episode before even. Okay I don't actually need this anymore so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that. Now what I want to do is create very simple slide blinds. So what we'll do is we shall create another cube once again drag this in and get it roughly lined up with the window and I use the scale tool so I press S on my keyboard and X scale it down to size in terms of its width and make it a little bit wider there we go and then scale it down in terms of its height as well by pressing X and Z for me and this here this is going to be the blind itself and then finally we need to reposition and then make it as wide as the window and for the last couple of bits I'm going to fine tune it so just go into edit mode set the transform tool select the ends and then push them so that they're roughly the right size <coughs> and we want it to be about the exact size that the window frame is okay I'm going to make that a bit flatter now what we want to do is rather than have the, the slatted windows flat like they are there we're going to have them at a slight angle so I'm going to hit 
A on my keyboard twice, so it selects every face. And then, still making sure I'm in edit mode, I'm going to select the rotation tool. And I use that, and if that doesn't work, go into the transform properties. And just rotate that there on the Y axis. And now we've got our first slide blind at a slight angle, which is what we want. I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm just going to resize my my frame here because it's ever so slightly too short and we can see it's going through the wall. There we go. And likewise I'm just going to resize the blind as well to fit by selecting the end and using the green arrow to push in so it's just big enough. Now, like last week, we're going to use the array modifier on this blind to quickly and easily copy it. So I'm going to select array and I'm going to change the values here. I'm going to choose the Z value and if I use the little up arrows there I can change the count so that we've got more blinds and we can see they're going at a bit of an angle there so I'm going to go back into the settings back into our array and increase it so we've got the right amount of blinds to fill that window. Perfect. Now if it's selected I'm going to get back in and once again we're going to rotate that. Press R on my keyboard and there we go, R and Y on my keyboard to rotate those slats around and then what we'll do is we go back into the array and just change the distance between them all. And we'll turn the count down now because now I've resized, I've got a few too many. And let's move those up. There we go, we can see we've got some very, very simple slatted blinds there. Once again, uh, in the process I've actually made them a bit too long for the window frame. So go back into edit mode if you've got the same problem. Select to the end and resize. And obviously if you do it to your main one, it will copy over to the rest as well. And if we have a look at our room now. And I'll just turn on ambient occlusion so we can see that. And I'm also going to turn off the, uh, the roof above. And there we go. So a very, very simple window. So we've got our simple blinds there. Uh, what we need to do now is introduce some light in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually I'm just going to swap these around because they're actually facing up the blinds at the moment, whereas I'd quite like them to be facing down. So set these to 180 degrees and. I'm also going to change that to 180 degrees so that the light that's coming from outside will fall through the slats towards the floor rather than be reflected up towards the ceiling. So there we go, we've got our slatted blinds. Now, let's create a light source outside. If we go outside, uh, create yourself a plane. Scale it up by pressing S on your keyboard. And rotate it around.
and we want that kind of pointing roughly towards the window. And this is going to be our light source and the way we're going to do that is with this plane now kind of directing at the window, go and right click the plane, go into materials, add a new material and select the material type as emission. Turn the emission up and the strength settings and what this does if we go into rendered view well we can see it uh, it blasts light at our subject and if we go inside we can see the light coming in through the slatted blinds onto the floor in our scene let's go into our active camera mode that we had before and we should start to see some light in the room And let's have a look in rendered view. Okay, good. It's adding a bit more mood and realism to our room. So we've got our slatted window with light outside now. But it's still not quite realistic. We can't actually see anything but white outside of that window. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a plane and we're going to add a background image to that plane and place it just outside the window. So I've created a new plane. I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees and then I'm going to scale that up. So this will be right outside that window. And with this scale, uh, with this plane even, we're now going to apply a texture to it by clicking new and this texture is going to be an image texture and we're just going to add a background image on. Go to down to the surface and under color go right and click the little dot and choose image texture then click open to open your image file navigate to where you've saved your textures uh, there we go that one will do fine and under vector click the little dot and select generated under texture coordinates. Switch your thing to rendered mode and you should be able to see your scene there. Adjust it so I know I need to turn mine around 90 more degrees. room and if we reposition we should be able to see through the cracks in the window we've actually got our scene outside now try and do here is try and move this up so that we've kind of got the actual sunset in the window itself now what we can also do is as we've got kind of this blood red sunset through the, uh, the screen we can also change the color of the light that we're emitting over here from this plane that we just set up to match that, so go back into the materials and change that light to a warmer shade of light. And I'm also going to increase the intensity of that. And there we go, we can already see that the, the colour of light that's coming in through the window now is just like the scene outside and it helps create that kind of sunset look. Let me 
this render for a moment and see how it's looking now with our window and our coloured light and scene from outside. Hopefully we should have a nice contrast between the white light filtering from downstairs into the room compared to the red sunset light coming from outside. And that's looking good. Our scene is really coming on. And what we could do if we wanted to make our window a little bit interesting, uh, we could add some more features to it. So for example, we could create more kind of batons in the window. So we could add a cubing and we could very quickly resize this. to fit our new window. And we can just repeat that process. So if I select both of those objects by right clicking and holding shift, I can duplicate them. tune all of them to the right size. Just for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to be really lazy. And just change the size of that last blind there to fit. And let's have a look how that looks now. And there we go. So that's our scene. Thank you for watching and I hope you have good luck with modelling your own windows and frames and I hope they turn out well. I look forward to seeing them.